I want to start off with a question. Suppose there is utopia. Supp suppose utopia exists. Do you want to live in this finished city, in this finished place? I don't think so. I myself grew up in a suburban district, the most mediocre, I, I dare argue, the most mediocre suburban district in the Netherlands, and I think it was extremely boring. And this is a characteristic that many finished places share. All the statistics are right. There's no crime. There's um, just order. There's no chaos. But somehow there's something missing. Some, somehow there's no street life. Somehow the finished life doesn't satisfy the citizens. And I think I would like to plea for the unfinished city as the end product. However, that may seem a paradox. Well, I'll take you on a journey in 12 minutes to Moscow and Tallinn. And I would like to start off with a metaphor how urban planners and architects throughout history have been trying to build the ideal, the finished environment. You could compare it, for instance, with Sisyphus Arbeid, um, Arbeid, with the Sisyphus labor, the ancient Greek myth of rolling a stone, a heavy stone, up the mountain time and again. Is this maybe what architects and urban planners are doing all the time, trying to reinvent their daily surroundings? I think as all urban dwellers, we can see in the city the layers of the past, and we can really realize if we look at our daily surroundings that the city is nothing more but an agglomeration of past thoughts and ideas. Because by definition, the built environment comes with a delay. It takes time from the drawing table to realization. And I think this delay causes a somewhat awkward mix. However forward-looking the plan may be, once it's realized, by definition, it's kind of too late. And we, living in cities, we have to deal with this mess, with scars of the past, with monuments, with old infrastructure. Whether it's post-communist, post-fascist, post-socialist, it can be anything, but it's an agglomeration of things. And I think these are all dated. So I think one of the key questions I asked myself at Strelka in Russia is how can we transform somewhat boring, finished environments? I will take you to Moscow now, and you can see that the red square is right in the middle, and Strelka, the institute I studied at, is not more than a stone throw away. Um, and Moscow is a city that never changes, people say, but at the same time, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it's changing rapidly. And that's why actually I went there, because it's not a very obvious place to go to for nine months starting in October. Um, I'll come back to that later. Uh, Moscow is a mega city of 10 million people, and it's unique because it's still growing in Russia, whereas the total population of Russia is shrinking. So it's a kind of um, magnet for people. They all come, and Moscow and the government, they might really um, ask some help like, how are we dealing with this continuous growth? And of course, in Moscow, with uh, such a rich, rich history, there's lots of old artifacts and lots of old ideas still uh, around. And maybe it's not a coincidence that the Strelka Institute itself is based in an old chocolate factory. You can see the remains here. It's on the islands in the Moscow River. Um, and the Strzok Institute, I studied that, it's not just an institute uh, for postgraduate students, it's also a press uh, agency, they have a bar, they host events in the summer, um, they have a huge inner courtyard where they show screenings, theaters, discussions. So it really tries to become the hub for over the past three years only of uh, progressive and forward thinking. Um, and one more, I think, good feature about it is that students there get actually paid because they're postgraduate and unlike any other programs perhaps in Vienna um, you don't pay 10,000 euros but you more or less get this and I think it's fair if you ask people to contribute to the city that you kind of pay uh, for that. So that said the institute has a hard time defining itself which I think is very attractive because I also uh, as, um, as you can probably tell by Josh's introduction um, I also have a hard time introducing myself. So there was really a match between what I wanted to do, experiment uh, with cities, making cities uh, unfinished, less boring, and the institute. Uh, 36 young graduates 
were coming together from Russia and from all over the place, and they contributed to the change. It's a very opportunistic program, no five-year plans anymore, just one year at a time, looking at what's happening in reality and responding to that. However, I'm not going to tell you about the formal projects we did. I'm going to tell you about another competition that we did in the meantime. Um, this is not a rock band. This is um, a group of people with I, um, I worked happily together with. It's Isabella Shikonska, Lindsay Harkman, Andre Janku. They couldn't be here. That's why um, I'm talking about it. But it's something, a project um, in Tallinn, in Estonia, that we did in the weekends. And we were just occupied during, during the week. But in the weekends, we thought it's so nice to develop a new vision for this area in Tallinn that is a finished future city from the past. And I'm, I'm really uh, thrilled and delighted that we won the competition and I will spend the rest of the presentation explaining how we actually make this finished city into an unfinished city. Well, if you look at the, the view only, it's the view that you get uh, from, uh, from above, and you see that it's spectacular. Um, but you also see immediately that it's kind of problematic because um, it's really a kind of closed, separated district. It's one of three prefabricated districts in Tallinn, and it's the only one that was finished. Um, it was built in 1968, uh, and as you can see on the master plan, it really still resembles how um, it was made on the drawing table, and in the 70s, it was really built like that. Sketches look like this, and the reality follows, not much later. The nine-story buildings typically they, they kind of surround the inner circle, but here on this picture you cannot tell where in the circle you are. And this is one of the problems that still remains, because this is a contemporary picture from Vika Oisma, the competition side, shows some of the problems. There's too many cars, there's no quality public space, and there is no orientation. It's monotonous, grey, and uh, of course, people want to have more orientation um, if people visit each other. If children go out and play, they, they, I think it's good if they can find their homes back. Well, that's something, I mean, I exaggerate a bit. It's a nice area to live in. There's a lot of green space and uh, it's dense. And um, there's just a lot of things to improve still. Because what you can describe, you can describe it as a sleeping district. So. Now zooming out and looking back at the map of Tallinn, you can see that it's an urban archipelago of different zones designated to mo mostly one function. In the middle is Vika Oisma, and you can see on this uh, map that we kind of try to pull in new attractions, significant aspects of urban life from um, outside. So that you basically, from a closed circle, create an open circle and invite people to um, not only create public space, but also public life. This is uh, going to be fast, but it's going to step by step. So you can introduce, pull in the woodlands by adding some, some trees and creating a um, recognizable part of the circle. Then you can connect the small artificial pond to the Lake Harku nearby. You can extend the grasslands from outside into the circle. And then you have a nearby zoo, which potentially can host some educational activities in the circle. And then we thought of something else. There's a, an open air museum that is dedicated to rural living conditions in Estonia. But wouldn't it be fabulous to also preserve the Soviet heritage and to have one area just unchanged, preserve it as it was? This is this area. It's satellite of the open air museum. Then. Also, commercial uh, pockets and, and uh, small shops, alongside with co-working spaces and, and small offices and uh, laboratories workshops. Because maybe I didn't tell you before, but there's 27,000 people living in this area. So it's the second most densely populated area in Tallinn. So it actually really asks for more activities, more uh, things to do there, and not being uh, an obstacle for people, but being a destination, not a void, but an, an island of attraction. So if you see the whole picture, you can understand that um, it's much more diverse. And instead of having a kind of empty, somewhat uh, monotonous uh, ground, we assembled 
functions. So we created an assembled ground of uh, contrastful activities that people can engage in. And by that, we don't really uh, recycle socialism in the narrow sense, but we also try to create some public life alongside with it. Well, this all looks nice from above. It's very kind of generic, I realize that. Um, but let's move from the macro perspective to the micro perspective. If you see um, this picture, you realize that um, there's a whole different view to the area if you look outside. And actually, um, maybe surprisingly, everyone um, is not enjoying the view, but is participating in the circle um, where things are happening. You see that there's two buildings in Tallinn, in this Vika Oisma area. You have the schools in the middle and the housing districts, the housing blocks around it. And both can be transformed. Both can be stripped and uh, allow for new platforms to emerge. Because Stalin is, after all, a shrinking city, so there's not much need to further densify the densely populated area anyway. So we remove the pre prefabricated panels and we reuse the old structures for public use. This is the school that can change into an open-air cinema, for instance. But also the housing blocks. The housing blocks can change uh, on the ground level. The first two stories can be designated areas for public use. And by opening up, we just create a continuous landscape. Instead of the closed circle, we open it up. And this may very well kind of echo the original drawing from, the 60, from 69, 68. Um, creating public life on the street. But this is not the whole story. Of course, you get rid of the panels, but wouldn't it be fabulous to reuse them and pay tribute to the modernist architecture that is present there? So we decided to use these panels for creating small farms, shops, market stands, or even a, a maybe an outdoor gallery in the summer. After all, we just wanted to open up the circle and make public life just leave and come in. I think um, by connecting it to other main attractors, we kind of succeeded. All seasons, uh, all year round, we can make sure that this connection um, is present. And I think that people, not only from the area, but also from outside, they can rediscover this place because they might, never seen it, uh, might have never seen it before. And of course, the pond, the center, turns from a void into a cultural venue where a lot of activities are going on. Well, you might be skeptical now and say, well, isn't this exactly some, just another plan from the drawing table? Well, yes, indeed. It is, again, a drawing, a plan, a vision. And it might take time to really implement it. However, I think this plan has an open end. It is open. It shows platforms and spaces for improvisation. And by doing so, I think we create the ultimate uh, platform for social life within this circle, where people can meet, where people can uh, talk to each other, where there can be new forms of interaction. And as such, they can, the, the residents themselves can very much determine and discuss what will be the future of the district. And that said, I think we created um, the whole picture, the bigger picture, is that we kind of, by adapting the architectural heritage and respecting it, that's for us the only way to preserve it. And by kind of combining all these functions and creating a vibrant area that is less boring and less monotonous, we deinstall the finished city and we create the unfinished city. And maybe it's in the unfinished city that people live happily ever after. Thank you very much.